Right, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be potentially looking at one of the cheapest EU bots on the market and that is Fleek Framework. I'm going to be talking about why. Why is it so cheap? Should you get it? Is it worth the money? Is it a good starting bot? We're going to discuss all that in today's video. I'm also going to show you around the bot, just explain a few things, how they work, what it's like to use and also can you actually use this many sites and as a user, how good is it? Is it worth the money? This is true, however, I, I don't really like this closed mindset of just thinking that's the only way because in my eyes, I see if you buy a bot at the right time when it's going cheap, you can wait only maybe three months and the bot can appreciate 500 pounds easily, even more sometimes, especially if an update comes out. So you'll only make, I don't know, 500, 600 pounds using the bot yourself. The bot will gain value another 500 pounds and you can make a thousand pounds profit in only a few months just from bot flipping. Um, I'm only hitting a few releases. This is something I do myself quite a bit. Now, this is what I want people to see when they see people buying bots for a thousand pounds. You know, you might not necessarily make that back too quickly. It might take a bit of time, especially if you're starting off spending a thousand pounds on a bot, finding the right proxies that work for different sites and just kind of getting set up how to run for sites. I prefer the idea of buying a bot as an investment. It's going to appreciate you then use the bot to make a bit of money. While you're making money, you can rent it out, do other things. A bot is more than something to get shoes with, although that is fundamentally what it is. However, at around 300, 400 pounds, this has got to be one of the best bots to buy and actually make your money back through using. It's such a cheap amount. Honestly, only over a few releases, you can make that money back pretty easily, especially if you either hit multiple or it's a high profit release. You can do really, really well with this once you get your setup sorted. So is this a good bot for starters? Well, first of all, it is a CLI interface. Now, some people do find this intimidating. They don't always know what to do. However, following a few guides like this, this is kind of a guide. You can normally get your head around it. It's really not too hard. So would I recommend this for beginners? Absolutely. Now, it's not the best performing bot. However, it's so cheap. I really don't think you're gonna lose money on it. And it's a really good way to kind of enter the botting world. So as you can see here, we're gonna look at the site list. So you can see you do mesh. Mesh sites like JD Sports, The Hip Store, Foot Patrol. These are really good UK sites. However, JD Sports is much bigger than that. JD is also around Europe and it does very well on not necessarily JD Sports UK, but JD Sports, maybe Finland and these other regions. And this is something you'll see a lot more within Fleek. It's not necessarily the best UK bot, but it's definitely a very good EU bot. But maybe for not people in the UK, we're talking about mainland Europe here, whether this is Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, sites like that. I think this is where it really stands out. So with Mesh here, you can see you have front end and back end. Front end is the website. So this is what you see if you're browsing the website on your computer, and that is called Mesh front end. However, back end is what you see on the app. So you actually see different things and different products load. So they might only load on front end, but not actually on the app. So they'll be on the website, but not the app. This supports front end and back end, so it can almost act as if it's a phone and also act as if it's a, a computer mesh is definitely one of the best sites for fleek that is uk and kind of everywhere in europe it does so well on them especially jd sport so if you want a good bot that's very cheap for jd sports this is a perfect option you also have foot locker i don't think foot locker works too well and neither does foot sites now looking at this site list it isn't actually as good as you may necessarily think it is and that is because a few modules are locked now whether this is because they un they'll unlock it when a drop is about to happen or it's locked because it doesn't work, quite a few of these are locked. So I have a little list here of the modules that are locked at the moment and it is Snipes, On You Go, All Lab, Korea, Slam Jam and Off-White. Now that is quite a few out of this list and it definitely does actually reduce the list that you're able to use. Um, however, a few of them be unlocked for drops and overall it's not too bad but maybe it doesn't look as good as you think it would. Now Fleek do have a GUI, however that isn't currently available or working and honestly i prefer a cli interface i think it's better to just learn how to use a cli interface first of all but it doesn't really make that much of a difference but if you had fleet you were recommended to use the cli because it was way better than the gui in the first place as i was saying one of its best sites is mesh however some of its other best sites as you can see here are offspring and office i know it does very well on offspring drops as well as zalando it hits pretty consistently on Zalando. You can look at their success. There's a guy from Zalando, Poland, who hits pretty regularly on drops. So the way CLI bots work is you can see you have numbers by each of the different sites here. So let's say we wanted to run a Zalando task. We could literally just type in, you see, use the letters 12, type in 12 and enter, and it will begin running. I don't have any Zalando tasks, so I didn't do anything. If you press zero and go to the settings, you can see all the different types of settings here. And this is where you can adjust your delay, your timeout, your webhook, so delay and timeout, uh, how 
often your bot will refresh the website so obviously if you refresh it more so you have a lower delay you're refreshing it every one second or 0.5 seconds the website's more likely to ban you and you'll need to rotate proxies and a few other things however if the drop is going to happen very fast it's going to sell out you want to pick that item up as fast as possible so delay honestly just look at your cook group ask your cook group they'll help you with that but essentially you want to think you want to find the mix between getting banned and picking up the item fast enough but most of the time you can just ask your cook group and they'll help you with that. A webhook, this is what your PayPal links will be sent to or your successful checkouts. This will just tell you you successfully checked out and I'll show you an example of that later. Again, you have toggle failed webhooks, the capture harvester, whether you wanna solve captures. You can also set up Google cookies for the capture harvester here. And then capture solver, this is like two capture cat monster and anti cat. And then task timers, this is if you want them to automatically come on at a certain time. So if you wanna exit settings, just press zero and enter. Now it's time to go into the settings and have a look what they're like. And that's where you would create tasks as well as profiles. So here we are, we are in the configuration file. And now, as I was saying, profiles, that isn't really like other bots that you would maybe have in a GUI or a, a CLI bot like Zonos or Flare. In here, I, when you create your tasks, you set up the profiles. Now, I don't think I'm a fan of that because it's basically individual, but you might like it. Honestly, I don't think it's the best. It takes a bit longer when setting up tasks, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. Today, we're just going to be setting up tasks for Mesh Frontend and Offspring because I've, they're really the sites that if you're in the UK like me and using it, you'd be using. So yeah, let's do that. So first of all, we're just going to be doing Mesh Frontend. As you can see, it's Frontend here. And you have three folders. You have Success, Tasks, and Proxies. In your Success, this will show you everything you've copped basically recently and will show you stuff like if I double click on it, you can see the time, URL, paid, and email. So if you, let's say you've got loads of things, maybe some webhooks didn't come through, a few errors, this is a good way of just what the bot stored and what the bot has. Shows you the time, URL, PID, pretty much everything you need. And in the proxies.txt, this is where your proxies will be. So if you're running Mesh or Offspring, you might have your residential proxies and also your data center proxies in there if you want your really fast speeds. Now, if you need any advice with proxies, just look in the description. I've linked a lot of the people who work with me and I use. I highly recommend these guys and I have discount codes on most of them that you can use to help you get a bit of a discount. I recommend using them. Shout out to all my proxy sponsors. Now, going in the tasks folder, you can see I've set up a little example here and I'll take you through this. So making tasks really is quite simple here. However, you also have your whole profile creation in here as well, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now I'm using Ron's editor. This is pretty much what people use to edit CSVs. That's kind of common knowledge. So basically what we have here is I have this shoe from JD Sports and I've copied the PID SKU, call it what you want, from here. And I've pasted that in into this PID section here. Now this is mesh front end. So as you can see, there's multiple sites it could be. It could be foot patrol size. However, it is JD Sports. So as you see, I've typed in JD Sports. And then the domain, I'm in the UK, it is jdsports.co.uk, as you can see here, jdsports.co.uk. If I was in another region, if I was in France, in here, I would put jdsports.fr. It would be as simple as that. Now, size range. This is something that you can be quite specific on. You can just put in a size. Let's say you wanted to go for a size 7, you could just put that in. Or if you wanted to go for a random size, you could you could literally put in random or you can do a scale as I have here. So 5 to 8. This gives you a lot of freedom on the sizes. You can pretty much do what you want. Very self-explanatory, literally just setting up the sizes you want to go for. In discount, you can put in a uni days discount code if you have one. Buying some bricks might be good to just chuck it in there. If the bot can't apply it to certain products, mainly on hype releases, it will just ditch it and go past it, but it might slow you down a few seconds. Payment method. In here, you can put PP, which means PayPal, or CC, and this stands for credit card. This will just change whether you check out using their browser extension in your webhook when you press click here, or it just goes automatically through your card. Now, I believe for Mesh, PayPal is recommended, but I think you can also use credit cards just fine. Now, first name, as you see here, you can type in random. Now, you can type in random for most things, and this is what you'll see throughout this. And it's a really good feature. It literally just puts in random information. In all caps, random at then your email. So this could be at yourname.com or .net or whatever. This is just your catch-all email that you have to set up. And you can, this will automatically put a random name and maybe some numbers in front of the email for you automatically. Just give you a bunch of emails all going to the same inbox with a random name. Again, for phone number, you can put in something or you can just put in random. Again, phone number on most sites really doesn't matter. So I would recommend putting in random for that. Address, this is all fairly simple. As you can see, I've done house one on 123 Street in London. Uh, just a made up address. 
this is where you put your information in. JD Sports does like to cancel, so you really want to jig this as much as possible. However, for doing it for each site might be a bit tedious, so do it once, and then I'll just copy and paste it into each kind of task CSV that you think you'll use. With this bot, it's nice to just sit down for an hour and get everything set up. Uh, it doesn't take too long. So once you have all your information here, you just put the country, and again, we're on .co.uk, so we're just going to put GB in, and we're done. As you can see, I'll be running CC here. I would put my credit card number, month, year, and your CVV. Now, when doing credit card number, month, and year, for month, you just put 01, and for year, you put the whole thing. So, for example, 2021, and that would be how you'd format it, just in case you're wondering. And essentially, we've created two tasks here, both going for the same item on JD Sports, a few different things here with PayPal and credit card, but that is pretty much everything on setting up sites for Mesh. It's really that easy. Obviously, you'd want a lot more than this. Chuck in some residential proxies, press start, and you'll be good to go. Obviously, there's a few more things than that, but that is really how easy it is to create tasks in CSV. It is not hard at all. Now, looking at Offspring, again, it is very similar. Again, SKU, PID, whatever. This time, we're looking at an Ultra Boost, and this is just found up here. A lot of time, your Crook group can give you early PIDs. So, obviously, if it's encrypted or whatever on a hype drop, if you have an early PID, you can chuck that in and you have a bit of an advantage. Size, random, put in whatever. Coupon, first name, last name, email, phone number, house, address, or your address there, and boom. As you can see here, Offspring is PayPal only. That's because their credit card processor is absolute garbage. Most bots don't really use that. They just stick to PayPal. And honestly, with Offspring, it's better. I believe it reduces cancels too, but I'm not too sure on that. Now, if you look in your fleet folder, there's also a config JSON. I'm going to take you through that quickly. So in the JSON config, you can see I have my key here, which is the key to your thing. Obviously, that'll be blurred out because otherwise you'll be able to use my fleet. You also have delay and timeout. So this is what I was talking about, how quickly the task times out and how often it refreshes. You then have your webhook that will also be blurred out. That is when a webhook will send to and where you can do your PayPal checkout and also just with your checkout in general. Send failed webhook. So if you have a failed checkout, you can change this to false, but I've kept it to true. Here is where you can put any of your two capture, anti capture cap monster keys. Now, when you run a task, which I'll show in a second, if you change this to false, you won't have the harvester thing pop up. And you can also put a proxy on that. Now, these are the timers if you want certain stuff to start at certain times. Honestly, just set that up in when we're in the settings menu, you can do that there. And again, we have quick tasks. Now, when you have a monitor, it might say fleet. I'll show you, I have a screenshot what it will look like. You can click this and this will automatically start a quick task off this. So you can click this once if your fleet open, it will then actually start this task for this exact item and you can run. So here is your information that it would run when you click that. So here's basically just your normal standard unjig stuff uh, that you'd put in here. And then, yeah, that is it. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when running tasks and how well they work. So let's run those mesh front end tasks by pressing one and simply pressing enter. And you'll see, boom, it's asking us to allow access to the Fleek engine. And here we go, you've already carted one. You can see this is the capture solver. So if there are any captures, we could press click and click here. As you can see, submitting, carting, we do a proxy error, probably because I'm trying to do this all through. I haven't put any proxies in, so it's just doing this all. Boom, webhook successfully sent. And as you can see up there, we have one checkout. So it really is that simple um, just to have a test. And that is hopefully what it will be like on drop. There'll be a few more errors and stuff. However, with enough tasks, the right proxy is in the perfect setup. This is essentially what it should be like. Maybe not this short, though. Obviously, this is just a random product in stock. And this is what the webhook would look like. It will say manual payment required, a photo of the shoe. So that was just a random NMD. As you can see here, JD Sports FE. That means front end. You have the PID, the mode, which is in default, the email. So as you said, we had random. And it put Wilfredo and then a few numbers at catchall.com. And then once, you, if you have the extension installed, you can just press click here. And this will redirect you to PayPal and then you can pay for the item just like that. And that is how easy it is. With Offspring, it is exactly the same. Type in 10, press enter, allow access. As you can see, capture harvester. By this time, already carted it, about to check it out. Successfully checked out, webhook sent, all done. So what is my overall opinion on Fleek? Now, I think for the price, for £300, it is a brilliant bot. Honestly, a bot for £300 on its own, it's not a bad idea. It's going to get updated. There's going to be a future to it. It does work. I think the fact you can actually make money with this as well. People use this bot. People do hit with this bot. These dunks that dropped some screenshots up there of what people hit. It's not bad. For £300, you can easily make your money back with it. 
there's the chance for it to appreciate. Honestly, it's so cheap. It might not just be a bad, a bad bot to have in your inventory. As well, it also has sites like Disney and New Balance. Now, Disney is, it isn't even sneakers related. This is just general flips. If you can use that to maybe make a bit of more money, not necessarily sneaker related, it wouldn't be for 300 quid. I mean, that's not much money when it comes to bots. So honestly, you might be able to make your money back just through one site on that, especially with a site like New Balance that not many bots have. If you're in the EU, if you have a bit of money, if you're considering starting or just want to bot Disney New Balance or have Fleek under your belt as a bot, it might not be a bad idea to get. And that's my overall opinion on it. It's almost so cheap, it's hard not to just suggest if you have a bit of money, it might not be a bad idea buying that. And that's my overall opinion on Fleek. It's maybe not the best bot in the world. However, I think it does the job and for the price, you cannot beat it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And yeah, I'll see you in another review. Comment any other bots you want to see reviewed down below.